trees start to lose, uh, a lot of times their upper leaves, the, the beetle tends to attack and lay most of its eggs in the upper portion of the branches. The larva will start to feed downward. There'll be more egg laying in subsequent years down the branches and in the bowl, and eventually they will occur in the bowl of the tree as well. And of course, that functionally girdles the tree, if you will, and the tree dies. The bad thing about this insect, all right, it comes, comes from Asia. Over here, it has no natural predators. So this population is going wild. It likes any ash that we have, green ash, white ash, blue ash, other ashes as well. Doesn't care whether it's in a soccer field, the end of a soccer field, in your front yard or in the woods, doesn't matter. It can fly around and attack an ash tree anywhere. Doesn't care, this is the bad part, doesn't care whether the ash tree is healthy or sick to start with. Doesn't matter. Some of our insect diseases, like southern pine beetle, native insect that attacks weakened pine trees. Real healthy pine trees, they have a hard time successfully conquering a healthy pine tree, but if they find the sick one, they can actually smell the sick pine tree. These guys don't care. <laughs> healthy, sick, doesn't matter. Okay. So things like fertilizing tree and watering tree, while all those are good things to do in your yard, and you should do that, because healthy trees will have a better chance of surviving an attack, okay, than, than a sick tree. You can do all those things and still get infected by the emerald ash borer, unfortunately. And of course, our wooded trees, you can't do any of that stuff. You can't irrigate them, you can't fertilize them, you can't do any of that. And 100%, just about 100%, of the ash trees, I know of one account right now where there's three trees somewhere up in Michigan that have been attacked and haven't died yet, but generally they always die. So once they get infested, you see this kind of gets manifesting itself like this, that tree's going to die. So, so you got a yard tree, you need to be protecting it with fungicide or insecticides and stuff like that in front. Of course, woodlands, we can't do that either. So this was a map, most recent map that's produced sometime this summer. All these little red dots indicate where the emerald ash borer infestation is at. You can see it all got started up here, blamed on the lake states, if you will. Commerce stuff moving around. Um, Michigan, of course, got hit with it first. You got, got northern Ohio, northern Indiana, around Chicago and Illinois, expanding out from there. And finally, down here into Kentucky. So it started up here and then moved everywhere. Now you'll notice that this is not a solid red circle that keeps getting bigger and bigger. You can see that there are infestations that jump all around. And what that's from is, you've got a log as a log on a truck, a log truck, or a log as a piece of firewood that still has bark and wood hooked together that somebody moves from here to there. And those firewood sits around, or the log sits around a little bit, and the insects hatch out and fly around, and now you've got another red dot on the map 100 miles away. That's how this thing moves around. Okay? The little beetles themselves are only going to fly so far every year. Okay? So they're going to spread very slowly. They're not going to hopscotch like this. The state parks in Kentucky have a rule they don't enforce it very well that says no outside firewood coming in and from pests like this and others that they're worried about. So the very last thing, if you don't want how Kentucky's going to get infected, it's because everybody from Ohio and Indiana spends their summer vacations where? At parks in Kentucky. So they're all going down to bridges and bringing all this stuff to us. That's how it's going to hit. That's how it's going to hit. We had six infestations that we found this year. We had three, over 3,000 traps out spread throughout the state last year. We collected them in September, looked at all the bugs on them, found no emerald ash borer on any of those 3,000 traps that were out. But somehow in the winter, we magically found six infestations that had been there two, three, or four years. So it shows you how well our trapping is doing. We got 6,000 traps out this year. We'll see. Okay. So the bottom line is we found six infestations. We knew we've had the beetle here. We just didn't, hadn't found it yet. 
We, for the last two or three years, we've known we probably got Emerald Ash Borer in Kentucky. We just haven't found it yet. Well, we finally found it. <coughs> so they're all up in here, which is not necessarily surprising. They are scattered around, okay, these six. And what happened this summer is we developed a quarantine around these counties right here in that area. What does a quarantine mean? That means you cannot move ash wood that's got bark on it intact from within this zone to outside of this zone without treating it, having permits, and all those kind of things. That's what it means. Now, that's where we are. Now, this, this quarantine is into effect now. It will stay in effect probably if we see any, if it if it'll be changed and expanded and stuff, it won't be contracted. If it'll be expanded or whatever, we'll have that information and stuff. That probably won't happen until next spring. Now, uh, there's all kinds of places you can go to get more information on Emerald Ash Borer. Uh, not only from what to do in the woods if you're a woodland owner, but what to do if you're, you're a homeowner. Okay? All those kind of things, what to do if you're a logger or forest industry and those kind of things. You, one place that you can get to this, there's all kinds of websites out there. You just Google Emerald Ash Borer and you'll come up with them. It's not a problem to find things. Our UK's forestry website is www.ukforestry.org. You can go there. This is what the home page looks like right now. You've got Emerald Ash Borer right there. You can click on that. That opens an Emerald Ash Borer page. And we have information on and links to, this is, this is a link to, it's kind of long. That's why I don't give it to you. You get this link right here, and it takes you to the Kentucky Emerald Ash Borer page. It has all the information on it, on how to treat your home tree or whatever it might be. Okay? These are, we have industry notes on there on cutting and hauling ash logs and shipping ash lumber and all those kind of things. Because our industry guys are the ones that needed this quarantine information right and how to deal with it right now. Okay. Here's what happens from the standpoint of if you're in Emerald Ash Borer territory and Emerald Ash Borer, if you're in the quarantine zone, you're with the owner right now, the very first thing that happens is ash prices go down. That's the very first thing that happens. So we've been telling the woodland owners in northern Kentucky, for I have for the last two or three years, they have mature ash out there, even though right now the market's bad. It wasn't so bad the year before last year, the year before that. What I told them was, get that out of the woods before quarantine hits, because it's coming. And now it has. Okay. Ash prices will rebound, of course, but it takes a while for the industry to get all the permits and all this kind of stuff and get it all working. Ohio's expert in that, Indiana's expert in that, Michigan's expert in that. We can use our expertise to help our industry get through it. Um, but that's the first thing that's happened. Okay. Um, there's virtually nothing you can do, virtually nothing you can do to protect a number of ash trees that are in your wood. Soaking the ground with, in, with insecticides, systemic insecticides around a tree in your front yard works. It's kind of expensive, but you sure can't do that out in the woods. Okay. So you're kind of hampered there. Um, but there are, the Division of Forestry is involved in Emerald Ash Borer. There are foresters that work in the part of the country where we've got the Emerald Ash Borer now are well aware of it. They know what to look for, and they can help you assess if you've got ash. There's other things that kill ash trees, by the way, other than the Emerald Ash Borer. We've had ash trees sporadically dying here, there, and yonder, and had been in the last four up this point in time. But certainly now that's, that's going to be a culprit. Okay. So you can go to that website, and ultimately you can get links up here. Go to the, the Kentucky's uh, EAB site. It's really good because it has links to all the federal sites and the other places, and it can give you up-to-date information on what's going on in, in, 